द लॉक्ड चेस्ट अडेप्टेड फ्रॉम सत्यजीत रे स्टोरी बाय द सेम नेम फिलूदा एंड हिज कजन तोपशे गो टू घुरघुटिया टू विजिट मिस्टर कालीकिंकर मजुमदार हु हैज इन्वाइटेड द डिटेक्टिव टू हिज हाउस फॉर अ स्पेशल पर्पज they are received by the driver at the railway station and taken to an old sprawling mansion that looks quite impressive in the small village there is however no electricity in the house and the place is lit up by oil lamps filuda and topshe are taken by the help to mr majumdar's room they find the old man lying in bed with a blanket drawn up to his chin the room has a table a chest three chairs a wardrobe and bookshelves that go right up to the ceiling and are crammed with books please sit down i am happy to see you thank you this is my cousin tapesh namaskar filuda and topshe take the chairs nearest to the bed my letter must have made you curious yes it certainly did or i would never have traveled this distance mr majumdar turns to the table on which four bound volumes are arranged in a pile next to a candle have you read these books already good heavens these are all extremely rare and they are all to do with my profession did you ever ha <laughs> no i never tried to become a detective myself you see 52 years ago someone in our family was murdered an english investigator called malcolm caught the killer after speaking to malcolm and learning about his work I became interested in criminology. That was when I bought those books. I was also very fond of reading detective novels. Have you heard of Gabriel? Wasn't he the French writer who wrote the first detective novel? That's right. I have got all his books. And of course, books by writers like Edgar Allan Poe and Conor Doyle. I can also see books on painting, gardening, biographies, travel logs, even drama and the theater. Of late I believe there has been a lot of progress in your field and now there are many scientific and technical ways to catch a criminal but from what little I know of your work you strike me as one who depends more on old fashioned methods and uses his brain more than anything else very successfully am i right i do not know how successful i have been but you are certainly right about my methods that is why i asked you to visit me I'm not only old but also ailing. God knows what's going to happen to my books when I die. So I thought if I could give you a few, they would be appreciated and looked after. I don't know how to thank you. It would have given me a lot of pleasure if I could actually hand them over to you myself, but arthritis has affected all my fingers. Startled, Filuda and Topshe notice that his hands are hidden under the blanket. Feluda keeps casting frequent glances at the chest kept near the bed. Does this chest have a combination lock? I can't see any provision for a key. Correct. All it has is a knob with numbers written around it. The chest opens only if you move the knob to rest against some specific numbers. Gokul, bring that bird over here. Gokul comes back with a parrot. Go on, sweetie. Say it. Shut the door. Say it. Shut the door. Oh big fat hen both filuda and topshe are surprised to hear the parrot speak the words in an amazingly clear voice what does it mean i am not going to tell you all i can say is that what you just heard was a code and it has to do with the lock chest over there you have 12 hours to work it out i see may i ask why the bird has been taught to say it about 3 years ago one day I suddenly discovered that I couldn't remember the combination that would open the chest. All day I tried to remember the numbers. Finally it came back in a flash in the middle of the night. So the next morning I made up that code and taught the parrot to say it. Feluda gets up, picks up the candle and examines the chest. I think someone tried to force this chest open. There are some marks on it. Ordinary dusting and cleaning couldn't have left marks like those. But is there anyone who would want to open it? Not many people live here. Apart from myself, there's Gokul, my manager, Rajan, my driver Monilal, a cook and a mali, Vishwanath, my son, is here because of my illness. He lives in Calcutta and arrived five days ago. You see, I suffered a mild stroke, 
and he came the next day with a doctor from Calcutta. Do I now have to be afraid that a thief might get into my room and force open that chest? Don't worry. Tell Gokul to keep an eye on things. I don't really think there is any immediate danger. Vishwanath has gone to Behrampur and should be back soon. You must have your dinner as soon as he returns. If you can crack the code, I will give you the whole set by Gabriel. Filuda and Topshe go to their room and await the arrival of Vishwanath. They hear a car arrive some time later. Soon, Rajan peers into the room. What is it, Rajan Babu? Chotu Babu has just returned. I have asked Gokul to serve dinner. He'll come and call you in a few minutes. Topshe becomes restless and goes through the books given by Mr. Majumdar while Feluda tries to crack the code in his notebook. Fifteen minutes pass by. Vishwanath comes and stands at the door. Sorry to have kept you waiting. My name is Vishwanath Majumdar. The three men go to the dining room and sit at the table. I don't think it was right of my father to invite people from the city to a place like this. It would be perfectly happy to go back tomorrow. I have no idea how my father can live here permanently. Did you say you were returning tomorrow? Yes. Father is not in any immediate danger. Will you be catching the train at half past ten? Yes. Filuda and Topshe finish dinner and retire to their room. Topshe is about to sleep. When he hears Filuda muttering, Shut the door and open the gate. No, that's wrong. Pick up sticks. Yes, that comes first. What's the matter with you? What has just happened, Tapshe? Is that I think I have won that set by Gabriel? Do you remember the rhyme that taught you to count when you were a child? A rhyme to go with numbers. Feluda, I know what you mean. Yes, I've got it. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, open the gate. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. That would do. Now, what do you think the full message means? Shut the door. That would mean three and four. Big fat hen would mean nine and ten. Right. There's an O before big fat hen. That means the whole number is three four zero nine one zero. Simple, isn't it? Now go to sleep. In the morning, Filuda and Topshe go to meet Mr. Majumdar at around seven thirty. I knew you could crack the code. I got Rajan to take out the books by Gabriel. Is the code three four zero nine one zero? Well done. Go on, take those books and put them in your bag. And I had a look at the chest myself. Those marks didn't strike me as anything to worry about. If you were not worried about it, nothing else matters. Vishwanath left very early this morning. Rajan has gone to the local market. Gokul will help you with your luggage. We can leave immediately. Very well. But I am really pleased that you could come. Moni Lal drives Feluda and Topshe to the railway station. Then Feluda leaves their luggage in the station master's room and takes a cycle rickshaw to go to the police station with Topshe. They meet Sub Inspector Sarkar, who knows Feluda's name. We have heard a lot about you, sir. What brings you here? Can you take your jeep and come with me to Mr. Kalikinkar Majumdar's house? There's something seriously wrong. They reach Mr. Majumdar's house and find a black ambassador standing outside the main gate. They stride past a driver who looks frightened and go into the house to find Mr. Majumdar's bed empty and the chest open with nearly all of its contents emptied. They see Gokul trembling violently. Gokul, where is Vishwanath Majumdar? He ran out of the bank door. The inspector leaves with the constable. Where is your master? Chotu Babu killed him on the day he arrived. That same night, the master refused to give him the code to open the chest and teased him to get it out from his parrot. Chotu Babu and his driver got together and killed him. Now tell me, am I right in thinking there is no one called Rajan Babu at all? Yes, sir. We did once have a manager by that name, but he died two years ago. Mr. Sarkar arrests Vishwanath. The money and the jewelry he had stolen from the chest are recovered. Although he ran a successful business, Vishwanath used to gamble rather heavily and was up to his neck in debt. I realized there was something wrong because he never saw father, son, and their manager together. The books on drama and acting made me realize that perhaps they belonged to Vishwanath, and he was good at putting on makeup. He had to hide his hands as they weren't adequate for a seventy-three-year-old man. But my suspicions were confirmed when I noticed this morning that although he was supposed to have left quite early, there were no tire marks on the ground. Put these. Back, for I have no wish to accept gifts from a murderer. As they leave the house, they find the parrot in the veranda saying to Topshe, "Shut the door, oh big fat hen!"